Hello everyone, my name is Eve Suva. I am with the Cell and Developmental Biology Department at the Feinberg School of Medicine here at Northwestern, and I'm gonna be sharing my research today about how cells move through the skin. And so I wanna start off saying I am a fundamental biologist. We can think of fundamental biology as like a uh, the foundation to a house. So that's asking the questions of how does this work? What is this? The who, the why, the what, the where? And then from there, we can kind of build this house. And that's translational biology. When we understand the basics, how can we apply them to medicine? And then the very top of the roof, that's the clinical applications. What are we actually curing here? And so I'm asking how cells move through skin, and then how does that mean that immune cells are moving through the skin, or how does cancer metastasize, and then how are we curing cancer, how are we solving problems with inflammation. And so let's start out with what is skin. Uh, we usually think of skin as what covers our body, and I'm really talking about the stuff that's inside of us. And so if it uh, exposes to the outside world, uh, your body is then lined with skin. And so that means skin is a barrier. And so inside of your mouth is lined with skin, your airways are lined with skin, your lungs, your intestines, your reproductive organs. And that keeps bad things out like bacteria or from fluid from just seeping into us. Or it also, um, and so yeah, that keeps the bad stuff out, but then the good things need to get in. Your immune cells need to get around. And so then my question is, how are cells moving through the skin? And I wanna talk through us um, some terminology. Uh, if we we're looking at the skin, uh, the borders between two skin cells are called bicellular junctions. Those are outlined in the blue behind me. And then uh, multicellular junctions are outlined in green. And I'm highlighting those guys because that's where cells are known to be able to move through the skin. And so you might be looking at this and say, oh, that's a gap. Cells are just coming through this little gap. But what we're not appreciating is that uh, the skin cells are lined with junctional proteins that are holding them together. And so then the question becomes, how are these cells moving through these junctional proteins? How do I study this? I look at frog skin, not the lady behind me, her skin. I look at embryos. We use the eggs that she's laying and we generate embryos. And we do this because uh, embryonic frog skin has these things called multiciliated cells. They're skin that's very similar to the lining of your um, airways, by the way. And um, my boss is an expert at multiciliated cells. I specifically use them as a model because in order to get into the skin, they move through the skin. And so that is my model system to understand how the cells are coming through. And so in order to look at uh, the skin, I uh, generate a FERT. I mix in together sperm and eggs of a frog, and then I inject those embryos with a combination of either DNA or RNA to produce a protein of interest. And I tag that protein with what's called GFP. GFP it stands for green fluorescent protein. It's kind of like a post-it note. It's a little green bulb that's like at the end of your protein that allows you to see things. And um, I like to think of this, or kind of a, a metaphor we can use is, I have a cat, she's a little black cat, green eyes. I call her GFP, she likes to hide a lot, and it's really hard for me to find her, and so I'm only able to see her because of those little green eyes. And so that's kind of helping us understand how GFP works. And so I take my embryos that are injected with uh, the instructions to make a protein that I can then look at when they're expressing GFP in the microscope, and then I can then uh, assess and quantify my data. And so what are proteins am I tagging with GFP? I am tagging junction proteins. And to quickly walk us through two main types of junction proteins, we have tight junctions in the red up top and then adherence junctions below in purple. Tight junctions, you can think of them as like a bathtub stopper uh, where they're stopping fluid from getting through and adherence junctions are like the cells holding hands. That's actually adhering them together. And so in my little diagram here, I have put a, uh, a different host of bathtub stoppers up top, so we can hopefully appreciate that there's many different types of tight junction proteins, but there's only really different flavors of adherence junction proteins. And so um, I started thinking, oh, are there any maybe more adherence junction proteins, ones that are specific to those multicellular junctions I was telling you about? And um, yes, there is, by the way. It is called Sidekick, but it's only in flies. And Fly skin is weird. <laughs> I don't have time to really get into the minutia of it. You gotta take my word for it. Um, so then my question became, is there, uh, or is the sidekick protein in vertebrate skin? And um, vertebrates, real quick, are like you and me. We have a backbone, also frogs. And then my question became, do we see this protein sidekick at those multicellular junctions in vertebrate skin? And do we see it underneath the tight junctions and around where the adherence junctions are? And uh, yes, I do see it at multicellular junctions. Uh, that's amazing. If we can appreciate to the uh, left-hand side here in green is sidekick and we see it accumulating at areas where multiple cells connect, 
to the other side is in purple the cell boundary, so you can see it's at those junctions and at the points where multiple cells are coming together. And then the next question is, is side peak below tight junction proteins? Do we see it below the red guys at the top? If we look at the top of the skin, yeah, it's looking so. If we look at the side, yes. So we see those green long pieces of the sidekick protein underneath the red tight junctions. And then is it at adherence junctions? Do we see it co-localizing at the same place with the purple proteins? If we look at the top, looking like it. If we look at the side, very much so. So my preliminary data suggests that sidekick is the first known adherence junction that is specific to multicellular junctions. And you might be thinking like, okay, so why is this cool? Like, what's the big deal? And I could tell you like, oh, this could maybe help us understand like how cancer metastasizes. This could understand how we fight inflammation disorders. But what's really cool to me as a fundamental biologist is that we're finding new things about what holds us together and makes us come together. And I think that's really cool. And thank you so much for your attention.